I am about to attend a candlelight vigil for Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, from the event page, it seems like it'll be well attended. It seems like there are already people here, and I'm about 10 to 15 minutes early. Um, and I just, I wanted to come just to be around like-minded people, to share and build strength together, and, um, to, to grieve someone and to mourn their loss, um, is something probably best done communally. So I am here for myself and to, and for everyone else as well. We must continue to carry the torch and to lead the legacy. And while Ruth may no longer be with us, we must remain ruthless in the ongoing quest for love, acceptance, and equality. I first heard of her when she was named to the Supreme Court in 1993. There were few enough women in law, let alone the highest court in the land. She struck me as fiendishly smart and incredibly fierce. She apologized to no one and never dumbed herself down. She was first in her class at Harvard, where she was only one of nine female students. She was the first ever female to be named to two major law reviews, first at Harvard and then at Columbia, where she eventually got her degree after transferring when her husband got a job in New York City. She was the first woman to ever be named to the Harvard Law Review. Even when the decisions went in ways she disagreed with, she made her voice heard and was a beacon of hope. She was well known for the collars she wore to court. For one expression of fashion, she added to the famous black robes. Ruth Bader Ginsburg perhaps has lived up to her title more than anyone who has ever existed. Justice. As Julie said in Hebrew, the word is tzedek. And upon her passing, right before the holiday of Rosh Hashanah started, the day of the Jewish New Year, a day in which we are taught that the book of fate for this next year is being opened, and the fate for this next year is going to be decided between these 10 days from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, at which point that book is sealed. Just before that book was opened is when we found out that Ruth Bader Ginsburg had passed. And there's a teaching that the rabbis say that when somebody passes away this close to Rosh Hashanah, it means that their fate was decided about a year ago at the last time period when this book was opened. And that God takes those who were fated to leave us in this year and allows those who are most needed in our lives to last as long as possible in that year. And we are all here because that is so true of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She has been so needed in our country, in our world, and in our lives. A woman who made sure that when she experienced injustice, it only fueled her passion to make sure that nobody else had to experience the same things. And I know this is a moment that it's e so easy to get swept up in the political ramifications, but we encourage all of us to take a moment now and just give thanks. Give thanks for her life and offer our blessings for her soul to be at rest as I share this Jewish prayer asking that her soul be put to rest under the protection of God's wings. El Malei Rachamim 
shochein mamromim hametzei minuch anechona tacha kafei hashchina im kedoshim u'tahorim kezohar harakia mazirim et nishmat Ruth Bader Ginsburg shehalcha leolama. Ba'arachamim yastireha V'seter k'nufav le'olamim V'yitror b'itrachayim et nishmata Adonai Hunachalata V'tanuach v'shalom Al nishkava v'nomaha Amen We pray that her memory is a blessing and that her legacy inspires us all to, to act for justice and equality. I'm going to sound the what we call the shofar in Hebrew, ram's horn, the ancient instrument that was sounded to cry for a new year and declare that there's time to celebrate, but also to call for when we need change and when justice is necessary. Certainly a call that she heard every year of her life as she attended the services for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. It's a sound that she would have if she could have heard this year. So I invite you to allow this call of justice to resonate through each of our hearts, inspiring us to make her memory an example and a way of life for each of us, connecting her past with our future. I think, you know, when the news hit, we were all kind of really struck in our hearts. I remember I was with my girlfriends and Lisa Willems drove up to us in her car and stopped it and went, did you hear the news? And just hugged in a, in a parking lot to tell us that Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away. Um, I go home, my husband already heard the news. I go, well, what are we gonna do? Where are we gonna move to? Um, <laughs> You know, I feel, I feel like this is a very real, you know, fleeting thought that came across our minds. Where are we going to move to? What are we going to do? How are we going to prevent this from becoming The Handmaid's Tale? Um, and I say that because, you know, these are real, real feelings, right? And real things that pass through our minds. And it was maybe all of two minutes before I thought, you know, there's Ruth over there trying her best to live as long as possible for all of us. She was, what, 87, right? 87 years old doing push-ups. Like, I can't even do one push-up, and she's over there planking, lifting weights, doing push-ups. I'm like, oh my god. I was like, please, like, please hold on long enough so that, you know, we can find a replacement judge, because she's doing everything possible to hang on just for us, right? To the point where I have conversations with people about the next election, and I go, hey, it really, you know, to me, sometimes, it's not really the person at the top. It's the person who's going to replace Ruth. Right, that, that, that's like my biggest driving factor and motivator. And as I talk about it with my daughters, just kind of, you know, the landscape of what's happening and what does this mean for us, I was like, you know what it means though? It means that the torch has been passed to us. It's all of two minutes before we go, thank you, Ruth. Thank you for everything you've done and every like second that you've stayed up late or time that you spent away from your family to do what was best for all these people you didn't know in the United States to make life fairer for us women. And when people asked her, well, how many women do they need in the Supreme Court until you're satisfied? You know the answer? She said all of them. And 
I'm sure there are people out there who are like, oh, come on now, that's ridiculous. Well, why is it not ridiculous if it's all men and no one questions that? No one bats an eyelash. And even myself, you know, I'm, I'm younger, but you know, that made me pause and go, wait, why don't I question it when it's all men and there isn't a single woman up there, right? Like, I've just been so accustomed to seeing it that way. What you receive today, I want you to take to heart. Because yes, Ruth, oh my gosh, you fought so hard for us and I appreciate it. And now you have wings and you can relax, you can sleep. Because we are gonna pick it up from now on. And I want to encourage that. I want to fan that little candle you're holding into a big flame. Because we are gonna move mountains together and we are gonna change this world together. And that is our promise to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. It was a great event. It was so good. It was so nice. It there's something there's something special about a candlelight vigil. Um, I feel like I I felt from it what I wanted to. I feel like it was. It felt like an event that honored her. There were I didn't know that there would be speakers. So but they all I I enjoyed everyone's speech. Um, each person spoke for just a few minutes, but kind of sharing just a little bit about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, what they meant to her, and but honestly more broadly what she meant um, for women in the United States. And on how a lot of them also emphasized on how that it is now, you know, especially with the the symbology of a, a candlelight vigil, like the torch is passed then to us to, to continue her work, to make it our work.